Hallelujah. What a great blessing. In your grant to this nation that they may gather to esteem him. And offer up the offerings of glad tidings unto him. And in our winter time whereby the powers of darkness wreaking havoc upon the minds of the people, nations, and the peoples of the earth. So your grants us this Kisvi Imat, Scripture Truth, we may come and lift up his mighty name. We may understand the beauty of Torah, and there is nothing like understanding the beauty of Torah. Above all things, Yisraya, as the old folks would say, I want to live right. And the only way I can get right, I must be cleansed and purged continuously every day. And sometimes we don't realize what kind of filth that is in us because we're not attentive to it. Yosef and I, we go to the garden every day and I weed, I weed every day. And I still have to go back and weed. It reminds me of me. Now you may be complete. But because I am not complete, that doesn't mean I continue in the wayward way of sin and wickedness. We're without any excuse. He's not going to continue to allow you to perform the things you do and think you're going to get by. It doesn't work that way. When he tells us to sin not, he means that. When he tells us not to disobey Torah, he means that. That something gets wrong with you if we can't understand the importance of that. You got to be told over and over and over and over. And it doesn't register in our mind. There's something mentally and spiritually wrong with us. I'm going to teach tonight and I want to do it uh, with the erudition, with strength and wisdom and understanding. There are things that we think we understand but we don't understand. Because we, we, we relate things on the basis of... Um, of a paradigm that we have learned from mama and daddy, and it's wrong. It has no validity in the walk of all Mariam. It doesn't refine us. We must walk in the perfect order that he has commanded. We must have the same mind as Yoshua Hamashiach. We're without any kind of excuse. I don't care what the circumstance is. I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what... Uh, debilitating things that you encounter in life, you're without any kind of excuse, period. We must come up to his standard. And there is a way we can. I want to teach tonight, Yisrael, and I want this message to you that have joined us, wherever its tentacles may reach throughout this nation, around the world, I want to, as the old messengers would do, I want to dedicate this to our precious Ak there in Chicago, Illinois, Ak Lester, his family. He has been a tremendously faithful Ak over the years, very quiet brother. He doesn't say much, very quiet. I like that about men when they're quiet. There's nothing more despicable to me than a loquacious fool. Loves to talk, but there is no productivity out of its, his or her talk. They love to talk, but there is nothing productive that comes out of their conversation. When one has the true legitimacy of Torah wisdom, their words are given attention. The ears are attentive to the words of those that are wise. If a man is wise, he will give his wise ears over unto the counsel of one that is wiser. But you cannot do that with a prating fool. They love to talk, 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 and no substance at all. It's amazing that if a man, woman can talk, and there is a resolution in them, it's just talk. And although we believe that what we think we believe, we don't believe it. I said to my Akshimri, I said in my boastful manner, drawn on the strength of my tenacity, I said to him, I said, well, Ak, I'm getting up in the morning, and I'm going to run the steps a hundred times. He said, all right, preacher. So my mind is set to do that. 
There's a will to do it. There's a passion and a desire, and my thoughts were on that. But the actual reality, when you began to roll, then you really find out the substance of one's own hearts. As the old folks would say, I bit off more than I could chew. I let my verbiage get my backside in trouble. And so around the 50th procession, there was nothing there. And I was reminded of what I said to him because we talk and we don't analyze our talk. The power of verbiage is of great strength. Uh, it will radically change us and those that are around us. And that's the truth. Uh, I said to my Isha today, now my natural sister, I call her Heifer. She knows that. She calls me today. I say, don't call me for that. And I knew what she was calling for. You understand? I know this time of the year. And I knew exactly. I said, don't go that way with me, woman. She said, oh, no, no, no. I want to call you and tell you something. Every time I see you, you always get know me about being fat and all of that and this and that. So you're fat heifer. I'm telling you the truth. She said, well, I've done something about it. I've lost over 50 pounds. I've learned one thing. I said, well, let me ask you a question. What did you learn? What, what was the catalyst for all of that? She said, I learned how to eat portionately. I went to a nutrition class. And I still go. And they taught me how to eat moderately and in portions. And exercise every day for an hour. So you can't call me fat. You're still a fat heifer to me. All right? Hallelujah. So when a man speaks, we have words that will pierce down to the nephesh of one. That is the word of great strength. It produced character in those that hear. Undoubtedly did something to a heathen that she heard what I said. And I wasn't modest in my speech with her. I was crude. And I was rude with her. I was crude and I was rude. No, I'm not calling to say happy birthday. I'm calling to let you know what I have done. I was weighing this. I'll be down to 170 pounds. Woman, you, you weighed more than I weighed. 256, 60 pounds? That's a mess. Y'all don't get quiet on me. I'm going to teach, all right? You see, there are many people in her life that have said something, but this was the one that she came back to and said, man, the only thing I had to do was obey what you said and listen. And once I did that, once I heard what you said, I began to do what you told me. And that's the action of Yisraya. We don't do what he commands us. We pay no attention to Yah, and that's just the truth. Everyone wants to be the master, and they have mastered nothing at all. They don't even have the persona of one that is of great strength. I want to teach where I left off on last Shabbat evening uh, on Shemach Yisraya, Ma'ach Lester. I knew he was going to call, and he said, no, don't stop. Preach a preach on. But I want to teach on tonight that which is the inhibitor or that which inhibits our imuna, our own imun, our faith. What is the inhibitor? What caused us? We all believe, don't we? We will all say that we believe. I'm going to define verbiage by its definitive. The linguist, the linguistic of the speech, what it implies. We all believe, right? Do we all believe? Yeah. All right then, let's settle that. Yah just does not pour out his imuna into the vessel of every man or woman. And that's just the truth, whether we buy it or not. And I will proceed in Torah to show us the imuna of Yah, he calls it sabula. It is a gift of great treasure. It is of great worth. It is of great value. He just doesn't give that to anyone. He gives it only to a people that is sugula, a special people. 
And I want to define that as I began this teaching on tonight in the book of Debarim, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. We must understand what this word special or sagula means. He speaks here in the book of Debarim, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Yah says, For you, Yisrael, you my nation, you are a nation that is kadosh. You're set apart, sir. You're not like the heathens. Sir. You're not like the Gentiles. Sir. You are a set apart nation. He said, You are a kadosh people to Almighty Yahweh. Sir. He identifies him as our Abba, the one that fathers us and nurtures us, protects us, uh, and guides us in the light uh, of his Torah. Now he identifies that we are Sugula people unto him, a great treasure unto him. He tells us that Omar, Ya our Abba, he is the one that has Bokher, he is the one that has chosen us. We have not chosen him, but he has elected us as a nation of people. And then he utilized this word. He says, uh, he has chosen you, Yisrael, to be a special sugula, a very valuable property, that which is a great treasure that he treasures up in his love, that which he is reminded of constantly, uh, his eyes are attentive unto that special, you are a special people unto myself. Not just any kind of people. And if you have something that is special, you just don't impart into that special people any kind of gift. It has to be equated with that people. It has to be special as well. He said, you are a special people unto himself. Uh, and he says above, not beneath, uh, not equal. He says above all people that are upon the face of the earth. There is a nation that is called Yisrael. It is a special nation uh, of special people. They are above all nations uh, upon the earth. Uh, they are special unto Omar Yahweh. They are people that he treasure. He has them in his heart. He doesn't have every nation of people in his heart, Yisraya. This is his language. It is not my language. This is the language of Omar Yahweh. That you will be a special people unto me. I don't care how the world perceives you. I don't care how they disregard you, uh, but you are special unto me. And when someone is special, a parent, parents, uh, a child has special gifts uh, and a special beauty, then they just don't uh, apply anything to that child. They just don't give anything to that child. They make sure that all the gifts or the things that accommodate that child accent and brings about a beauty to that child so in order for us to be a Sugula people then he must impart into a nation a special gift it's not the Ruach HaKo that's a special gift it's not the very breath and the power of his life that calls us to emanate his Sadiq his righteousness so he calls us a Sugula people a special people a special people unto him. Yet we all believe him. We say that. But we truly don't believe. And that is nothing because you believe. We're dealing with the emun, the confidence of assurance, the faith of Yah. But our hearts are steadfast and settled with the comforting of Torah. It revives us because we meditate on it. We think on the Torah. It changes us every second of the day. We're not the same three seconds ago as we were now. It causes us to progressively mature. It causes us to become strong and fortify for one purpose for the battle that, that, that is set in array against Almighty Yahweh, that he has chosen a special army. We can see that with Gideon, with special people to fight his battle. 
He has a battle, his integrity, his name is going to be personified throughout all the earth. I want to define the word believe. Now, I, I want us because I want to show you what Torah says about believing, all right? Uh, the word belief is omen, omen. Now, I, I, I do not want to inject my own uh, philosophical views of this. This is how it is defined. The word omen, to support. When we say omen, we support, we're faithful because we believe. To support, to confirm, uh, above all, to be faithful. To uphold the standards of Omariya, we nourish ourselves, we nourish our minds in Torah, we are an established people, it is to be faithful beyond measures, uh, to be carried to make ourselves firm as our confidence uh, in Omariya, to stand firm. To do above all, to trust, to badak, to have great confidence in Yah. And not only that, we must be certain. We cannot doubt. We must be certain. We must be sure. We must believe in. And all of that is culminated in one thing here. It is to foster as a parent or a nurse. So a mother fostered the child. She nourishes the child. She gives the child milk in the season, in the wee hours, uh, and the crying. She makes sure. And there's one thing about belief, we must nurture it. It must be continuously nurtured. And you cannot nurture it. You cannot nurture the imuna of Yah with folly and foolishness. Uh, and among those that are heathens uh, that have no honor for your Abba, you cannot do that. And that is what the imuna is. Uh, it is a mind that is nurtured constantly uh, in the Torah. And when one is nurtured, you see it uh, in the visibility uh, of one's character and strength. Uh, when a man is sickly, you can tell uh, he's sickly. When a man is healthy, you can tell uh, when that man is healthy. When a man has a healthy mind, you can tell because he has nurtured his mind. In the amun of your, his imun, uh, his faith is strong. It is steadfast. He is a firm man, not a damn ignorant jackass full of folly. But his stance, he is established in Torah. He has that kind of strength. But I believe, uh, let me read this to you then. In the book of James, the book of James. James chapter 2 and verse 19. There is an inhibitor of this special gift of faith in Yisraya. It is a special gift. It says in Yaakov, James chapter 2, verse 19, it says, you believe that there is Ichad, a Yaika, don't you? We believe that he is the only one. We believe that he is the mighty one. We believe that he is the one that redeems his nation. He says, uh, you do well. I speak of, uh, of your state of mind. He says, the devil believes. The demons, the shaw dims, believe, and they tremble. Don't tell me that we tremble. I hear the hypocrisy of men. Well, I was before Yad, I was just trembling with fear. They're liars. He said the devils believe that he is the cop. Even the shaw dim, the demons of darkness, they believe. So just believing doesn't measure up to anything at all, Yisrael. They believe. And to show that they believe, they tremble. We don't tremble at one thing, Yisraya. We don't fear defying Yah. We don't fear breaking His commandments, His mitzvah. We don't fear one damn thing at all, and that's just a fact. Even the demons of hell, they fear, and they tremble. Don't tell me you tremble. Oh, I was trembling. You were trembling because you were cold. You weren't trembling because you yare. So the arrogant mind said, oh, I, 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 I believe in you. Yeah, the demons believe. And they know. Yes. And to show that they have a great understanding of that, they even tremble. Do we fear you? Even in the midst of all of our corruption, our sins, our ways that, that, that denounce him, do we actually fear you and tremble? We don't fear you. 
Because we don't have that special resolve, uh, that sugula, that emun, uh, that special gift of faith. Uh, we don't have that, Yisraya. We believe, but we don't tremble. We don't fear our sins, uh, our pronounce, in our countenance, uh, in our actions, in our expressions. Uh, our sins are pronounced. Uh, so we don't care. The short dems, the demons believe. Now that's an indictment against us. And you think you got something because you believe. Oh, I believe. You can tell me I don't believe. The messenger of yours said, sure. Oh, I believe you believe. I commend you. But demons believe too. And to show their attitude to what yeah, they tremble when they hear that name. They tremble with great fear and trepidation when they hear the name of our Abba. You do well because you believe, but we are not firm. We're not firm in our belief, Yisraya. We're not strong in our imuna because it takes a special people to impart that special gift. You do not give a jewel of great value and put it on a pig's foot. You do not take a jewel and put it in the snout of a damn pig. You don't take that which is sagula and put it in a corrupt spear of a vile mind that blatantly defies you with no fear and with no thought of any consequences of one's actions or deeds against him. He doesn't put the power of his sagula, his special imuna there. And that's why we are in the condition and the shape that we are in even if we believed and feared we would be a great people, we don't even fear Yah. We don't even fear His name. Let's get right down to the resolution of whom I am. And not whom she is, but whom I am. We have no fear. And so we like to talk. We like to stimulate folly among each other. When a man talks of the power of his imuna, and faith comes by shemech, my hearing, and hearing by the power of the Torah of Yah. I said to Aki Yosef today, I said, in all of my learning, in all of my years of learning, the only way I have learned to comprehend, to understand things, is by shutting my damn mouth and by being quiet. And then I'm able to catch the nuances of one speech that is of great value and of great power. Don't come to me with your shallow ways and think you're going to teach me. You're not going to teach me. I'm not going to reduce myself to that spear. So don't come to me that way. You can do that with someone else, but not me. The emun, the faith that is sure, it is built upon the solid principles of Almighty Yah. It is an imuna for a segula people that uh, Yah identifies as like a eunuch. That he has only one care. He has rid himself uh, uh, of the application of the desire of those things that are sensual, uh, earthly and natural. He has one cause in life. And that is what Yisraya should be. We should have one cause, one purpose in life. Uh, and that's it, Yisraya. I'll proceed a little bit. I will. So we believe it doesn't mean anything. We don't have the omen of Yah. We're not firm. We don't nurture the faith of Yah. We don't nurture it. And that's why our own minds keep us because we don't believe. It keeps us. It inhibits us from studying the Torah, from rejoicing in the Torah, from desiring to hear the Torah. We will hear someone talking about the, of the delicacy of Torah and great truth. Uh, then we become so, we become so uh, asleep. Uh, we get sleepy. We don't want to hear that. I'm talking to us. You don't want to hear anyone talk about Torah. And when you don't want to hear that, you cannot nurture yourself. I don't care what it is, whether it's correction or whatever. You can't nurture yourself. Everything a parent says is to correct their children. Look what Torah says here in the book of Yakahana, John. Hallelujah. This is the Samaritan woman that Yoshua dealt with. 
John chapter 4, verse 10. Hallelujah. And then I want to go back to Debarim, Deuteronomy 30, verse 11. I want you to hear this. It says in John 4 and 10, Yahshua answered and said to this woman, this is what he said. He answered the woman and he said, If you knew the gift, if you knew the gift of Almighty Yahweh, you see men read, but they don't pay attention. They read, but they do not search out the detail, finite, uh, 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 finite uh, details of matters. Yoshua says, uh, and he asked the woman, said, if you yada the gift, if you knew this very special gift, uh, the gift of Yah, and who it is that says to you, uh, give me drink, give me drink, you would have asked him, uh, and he would have given you the living water. If you had known the special gift. For a man has a special gift of Yah. Then you will ask of that living water that flows from the loins of that one's mouth. We don't want the living water of Yah. If you knew that I was the one that, that this is the living Torah of Yah. This is what produced the power of the Emun, The Emunah, the power of faith. You would have asked me. Although your circumstance shows you the only way you can retrieve this water. Is to draw it from the well. But there's a water that is greater than this water. There's a living water that is greater than the water that Abraham and Yitzhak, uh, uh, they dug this well and they drink from it. But there's a living water. There's a water that is high. It has the living substance. It is the Mayim. It is the substance of life. And what a man has that in him, it flows. You can hear a beautiful river as it flows down at its turret pace. And takes out all of the impurities and dumps it in the ocean. When a man walks in the power of the special gift, he has a special gift of Yah. Don't tell me you believe. Your believing doesn't mean nothing. Demons believe and they fear and they tremble. We don't tremble. We don't fear Yah. We fear the police. We fear man. But we don't fear Yah. You've done well to believe. They showed them the demons of darkness. They believe. And they tremble. They have yare, they tremble because they know that what Yah says, He's not going back for one of us. He's not going to change one thing, Yisra'ya. We can, we can amuse, amuse ourselves and play with ourselves and think that we have a special place before Him. It's just not so. If the Melechim, if the mighty ones of Hashem, if they sin against Yah, and they were cast out of the heavens of Yah into outer darkness, and they're reserved in the chains of darkness until the day of judgment. You understand, Yisra'ya? What are we that are more creatures that we think? We're going to get why by with our persistence of defying what Yah says. It's not going to work. We don't have time uh, to try to get ready. We need to get ready now. And it's going to take a special gift. Love is a special gift. N not every man knows how to love. Uh, not every person loves. Uh, they have this phony, superficial thing they call, but it's not the Ahab of Yah. Love is the beauty. You see the beauty of the expression. Uh, I tell men all the time, watch your damn silly looking face. Uh, have nothing there. Love is a pure expression. And it flows from the issues of the heart. When a man has that, you will see it. You see it in his ruach. Hallelujah. I will, my friend. Hallelujah. Yoshua said, if you had known, he, he identified himself as special, right? That Yah has given, is Yoshua special? Does not the Imunah come by hearing the power of this living Torah? Yoshua? So if he is special, if he is the gift of Yah, then you know, you're not going to get the Imuna of Yah. Or you may believe that he is uh, the son of Yah. He is the redeemer of Yisrael. He is the son of man. You may believe that, uh, but you don't fear that. We don't nurture that. We don't let that grow in our bosom. We don't, we're not getting strong when we hear that. 
We nurture ourselves when we get strong, don't we? Our bodies get strong. We nurture ourselves when we feed our, our bodies the nutrients that it need. Our minds get strong. Our minds grow. The cellular structure, the blood flow. We have pure blood. The blood is much more, forgive me, because there is no blood from our body that flows to our brain. Isn't that an amazing thing? All the blood flows from here down, but it doesn't flow up around our brain. None of that blood flows around our brain. That's what Yah has done for man. That's something there. No blood from down to the lower extremities flows around here. None of that. Because it's tainted, it's poisonous, and it will literally destroy us. And yet Yah protects us. And see, the things you allow flow to your head, they don't strengthen you. They don't heal you, Yisrael. Matter of strength, he, he's quiet. He's quiet. His beauty is expressed in his quietness. Hear this in the book of Debarim. That this is what God says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. He's speaking to us, his nation, his people. The Hebraic Israelites. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. God says, he said, for this mitzvah which I command you this day, uh, it is not hidden. It is not bala. It is not made known unto you. Uh, it is not something that is extraordinary, so difficult uh, that you cannot understand. It is not pala. It is not hidden uh, from you. He's talking about the power of this coming Redeemer. And the only way we're going to trust him is by faith, Yisraya. And he also says for you, neither is it far off. It's not a long way off. And the coming of the great commission of Yah, the coming of Yahshua, is not as far as you think it is, Yisraya. He says here, he said, it is not far off. You must believe. Now, I want you to hold that in Debarim 30. I cannot just read straight through. Uh, I have to uh, incorporate the scriptures as the prophets of, uh, of, the, uh, of Shaul and uh, Kepha as they speak to the same matter. Hold that because I'm going back to Debarim 30. Now look what it says in Romans 10, uh, 16 and 17. Hold that in Debarim 30, 11. But I want to read this quickly in Romans 10, 16. He says that in Debarim 30, 11, for the mitzvah which I command you this day, uh, it is not pala, it is not hidden from you. Neither is it far off. The coming of your Yahshua, the power of this manifestation of this truth by faith, uh, it is not far away from you, Yisraya. Now look at what Torah says, says Shaul as he speaks uh, in Romeo chapter 10 verse 16. But they, as the prophet Yeshaya said, uh, he says, but they have not all obeyed the message. For Yeshaya, Isaiah, he says, for Isaiah says, Yahweh, who has believed our report? We say we believe the word, don't we? But he said, I, the Yeshaya said, who has believed our report? Who has believed the truth of Almighty God? Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 17. Who has believed the report? Who believe anything about them? So then, so then, imuna imun, faith comes by hearing. You must shemach. You must hear. You must believe the report that was written out of the loins of Moshe. Yeshua spoke of the same thing. Shall all the prophets of this day speak of it? He says, faith come by hearing. And the only way one develop the hearing uh, is by the word or the Torah of Almighty Yah. But I say, have they not heard? Have we all heard? Yes, verily. Yes, they all have heard. He said the sound went out into all the earth. The message of this truth went out into all the earth uh, and their words to the end of the world. Why? Yisrael has no excuse. None whatsoever, Yisrael. He sent forth the messages and their word went out into the whole Olam. It went out unto the Gates the end of the Erech into every nation to seek out the lost house of Yisrael. And when they truly hear, when they truly hear, it causes the imuna to rise in their hearts. We don't hear the words of faith. We don't nurture ourselves with faith. We nurture ourselves with folly and frivolity. 
We don't nurture ourselves in the Torah of Yah and the gladness of hearing the Torah of Yah. We nurture ourselves in silly, simplistic events uh, that are non-essential to our growth and our lives. We don't nurture our minds that it grows uh, and that it is strengthened, that it stands firm. Uh, when we hear the power of Torah, we know that it's true and then we allow our Ruach to support that even unto death, Yisrael. In other words, we're going to nurture that we must hear. We must shemach. We must hear. And we must hear one thing, the word. We cannot hear this damnable generation that is so opinionated. And they talk, they can't even quote scripture. They don't even know, they don't even know, but they love to talk. They love to talk. They love to talk. It says, Imuna come by hearing what? The Torah, the word, the Dabarim of Yah. The Dabarim of Yah. It comes by hearing the Dabarim. It comes by hearing the word of Yah. It comes by hearing the word of Yah. You will hear men talk. They will never even crack open the Torah. They don't even have enough in them to precisely speak specifically of it. It's all opinion. It is not the Dabarim of Yah. And that's a fact. Even in my ignorant days as a young man, I kept the Torah with me. And everywhere I went, where people want to talk, I opened up the book. I said, it says that right here. Yeah, I kept me a little scripture with me. I kept me one. And when I went, I had it. No, I didn't walk around like this silly juvenile generation today. Wanting everyone to know they had it. We need to get this in our hearts genuinely. That we sin not against Yah. It's not in our hearts. Uh, it's not in our minds. When Yah used the words uh, heart or love, he's talking about the love of the mind. It's not in our mind. You get this in your mind, right? You won't sin against Almighty Yahweh. It beautifies us. It makes us beautiful. Everything about us, we are special people. Hallelujah. Debarim 30, verse, uh, verse 11, verse 12. He says in verse 12 of Debarim 30, It is not the Shemayam that you should say, Who shall go up for us to the heavens and bring it to us? Who, who's going to go up and bring down this revelation of this Imuna, this word of truth, uh, to us? Now, Imuna comes by hearing and hearing by the word, right? Uh, who's going to go up and get this word? What he says, uh, that we might hear it. Who's going to go get it? That we might hear it. You see that? Uh, you see what Romeo says? Uh, it tells us as uh, uh, Isaiah says that this Imuna come by hearing. Uh, who's going to go up and retrieve this for us? Uh, who's going to bring it down? Uh, that we may hear it. Uh, and not only hear but that we may do it. Uh, that we may do it. So what is do it? That's a simple two letter little word, isn't it? Do. D-O. We've heard our Zakhen Yaramaya. He emphasized the word often. The word asa. Asa, in the Hebraic vernacular, it is to fashion ourselves according to the word. That's what the word do mean. Not only is it to fashion ourselves, but it is to accomplish what we hear. And the only way we can do that is by imunah, Yisraya. We must hear it. It must resonate. We must constantly hear. We must prepare ourselves, uh, people of Yah. Who's going to bring it down? First of all, we must hear it, he said. Uh, and then once we hear it, uh, we must do it. How can I? I would be a blatant hypocrite to teach like this. And I do not uh, subjugate myself uh, to practice this to the thoroughness uh, and the fullness. Uh, I would be a hypocrite. In all of my weaknesses, in all of my, in all of my inabilities, uh, I have none. I have nothing I can boast in. I trust this. I trust it. I trust it. It is a joy that he has selected me to trust this. Who's going to bring this word down that first of all we may hear it? You got to hear it, man. You got to do it, woman. You got to do it. You got to be a doer of what you try to tell someone else and it reflects in you. Don't tell me you got something uh, and you don't have a damn thing. Uh. 
You know my natural sister, she knew I had something. I don't care if she's listening. I said, you're a big fat heifer. You look a mess. You're not attractive. Cover up your fatness, woman. That's why I talked to her. That's why I talked to her. I talked to her like that. I see them rolls hanging off your back like some slabs of pork. Cover it up. Oh, David, shut your mouth, woman. This is my house. You're not coming here talking in my house. It's crude, isn't it? But somewhere she went and scratched her head and said, he hurt my feeling, but it sure, it sure blessed me. No, no, I'm not calling to tell you no happy birthday. I'm calling to tell you that you can't call me fat no more. You fat heifer? How about that? She says this to me. I don't even deal with my sister. She says, your words of the few, even of my kinsmen, when you say something, you honor what you say. That's what she said to me. You honor, and you can trust what you say, man. So I got to go, woman. I got to go. I'm tired. Don't, don't try to square me up like that. Moving on. Who's going to go down? Who's going to go up and receive that? But the word has come. That we may hear, not only hear, but we may do it. He said, what you must understand, what you're trying to get, uh, is not beyond the sea in verse 13. Uh, that you should say, uh, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it to us? Uh, for what reason? That we may hear it. How do we get this? You see men saying, well, uh, I'm going, the individual are here, I'm going down to Brazil. What, 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 an, what, what an assault. Uh, what an insult to the people of Brazil. Uh, as though this simpleton of a nutcase uh, got something that he's going to radically change uh, the nation of, Br of Brazil. Uh, you want to go to the other waters, uh, and when the waters around your own house are filthy, as though that there are not men in Brazil that are more capable than him. Yes. I could travel this world if I wanted to, but that's not my, that's not my, 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 uh, my call of you. Neither is it these men that say, well, oh, I'm going to Africa. They got brothers in Africa on that continent that love you greater than you. Oh, that dirt is so deep, man. I reached out. You didn't reach nowhere to get that, what you said. But out of the puddle of the cesspool of ignorance, uh, that's nothing deep about that. So the little fruitcake was here. There were those, I guess, they thought he was deep. I, thought, I, I knew he was a little nutcake when I first met him. I felt sorry for him when my Zarkin said, well, he'll be all right, Ray. I'm pitiful boy. Didn't take his money either. He tried to give it to him. I said, no, you hold on to it. Didn't take a dime from him. Gave him money. It's an insult to nations of people. The word went into all nations. It went to the four corners of the earth. And for some reason, this vile spirit of this corrupt nation thinks that it has faith. There's no faith here. And that's just a fact. We have faith for nothing. We don't even tremble at the presence of Yah when he poured down even the blessings of life upon us. We don't even tremble. We don't even appreciate that. And that's a fact. We think it's someone else, but it's my, me, myself. And we must deal with the corruption of our own hearts. You're not going to get anything clean in a corrupt cesspool of wickedness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 14, Yah says, but the word, the Torah, he did not just say it is nigh uh, or karab. He says very nigh. It is very close yes. to you. Hallelujah. And it is in your feth, in your mouth, and in your love. You see, that's what the word is, that you may do it. When you have that in you, you will do that. It is not some distant from Yisra'ah, yeah. it is in us. And when you got that in you, you will do it. It is not, it is karab. It is in your mouth, it is in your heart. Why did Yah put it there? 
Only in Yisrael that they may perform it. You're not performing the Torah of Yah. It is the power that word that he has put in us. Uh, that caused our imona to grow exponentially. Uh, I don't care what the peril is, the trial, the circumstance. Uh, we got to trust Yah. Uh, if I trust him dying, I trust him dying. That's just me. Now I'm going to, with every measure that he gives me, uh, I'm going to utilize that. Uh, I don't expect you to do it. Uh, but I will. I will. And that doesn't make you any less than me. I, I will. There are men that can lift 50 pounds. I said to uh, my uh, Zakin today, I said to them, I said, you know, I watched this old man yesterday, Ak Simeon and I. I was at Lowe's. And I said to Simeon, I said, I, I guarantee he's 72 years old, every bit. And I'm watching this man work loading uh, these 50 pound bags of concrete. I said to Simeon, that's his son right there. And I'm sitting on a bag of sand and watching this old man. And I'm not talking about he's, he, he's struggling to do that. And so I walked over to the old man. I said, my friend. Just like that I say, oh man. Oh man, I watch you. He looks at me like, who are you? And so the... The man he's working for, I said, oh man, I watch you. I watch you load those 50 pound bags of concrete like that. I said, how old are you? It's young man, he, he's 75. I said, I said to my friend, he's every bit 72 years old. You understand? I said to him, is this your father? He says, no, but I wish he was. That's what he said. You understand? See, that old man, he just wasn't talk. He did. You could see it. And I was impressed. He didn't have to say nothing. His actions spoke greater than his words. It's the man's actions that speak. When I saw that, I said, oh man, I tell you, you put a young man like me to shame. Of course, he could not work me, but I was impressed. No, he couldn't. I was impressed with that, though. Very much impressed. See, the old man would say, well, I can do that. No, you can do what he did. And he was loading those bags up on a big truck. That's Oxymir. He was throwing them up there. Boom. Just look at this old man. And I sat there. Watch. I thought about one or two, three bags. He's loading them. Young man, he's out wicked him. See, that's what this word does. It causes us to perform. You don't have to say anything. He didn't say, look at me. He didn't say that. The volume of his activity spoke greater than anything. That a younger man like me was so impressed. Then all I could say was, oh man, when an old man has the beauty of Yah, what can you say? But you're a beautiful old man. When he look like a vile serpent of hell, his expressions are corrupt. I would tell him, your expressions are corrupt, old man. Stop it, old woman. You don't have faith. And I don't take it back for no one. I don't care who you are. They're corrupt. Where's the faith among his nation? It's a special thing. Faith is special. It is a sugula. It is sugula Yisraya. Demons believe, but they fear. We don't even fear ya. We sin with reproach. And don't even give a thought to it. All right? Hallelujah. It is in our love. It is near unto us. That's why he's given us this word that we may do it. You talk all that word and you don't even do it. That's, that's, that's hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. You always got a word to talk. You got wisdom of the word and you don't do it. That's hypocrisy. When a man got a nice car, he washes it. You know he takes care of the car. You can see that in the glean and the loss of the shine on the car, can you not? You got something that is of great value, of great, of great value, that then it will be seen. You know the promoter man's gift will make room for himself. Uh, he can walk in the midst of a nation of people and they will say that man is a gifted man. They will. You go to Jerusalem, so they don't 
They put the most choice diamonds so that your eyes, uh, that's a special diamond. How much is that? That's, uh, that's $65,000, just the stone, not the setting. They don't put any kind of thing there. When, they, when you go somewhere like Rodeo Drive, where they got diamonds, uh, I mean diamonds, not this little trash you get out of Walmart, all right? You understand? So we are a, Jew, a, a, a gem unto Yah, and he has put something in us to accentuate the gem that we are faith. Amen. That we believe and trust him. We grow strong. We nourish our minds with Torah, Yisra'ya, the 32nd chapter of Dibarim. Hallelujah. This is your inhibitor right here. This is what inhibits us right here. It says in Dibarim 3215. What has circumvented us? What has caused us to fall, Yisra'ya? Can I read it? Dibarim, Deuteronomy 32:15. He says, but Yeshuran, what is Yeshuran? Yeshuran is a name that Yah has given unto Yisra'ya. It is a name of great beauty and closeness. It is a name that he calls Yisra'ya. That it is a name like a, a man or woman gives uh, one another a pet name. That's what Yeshuran is. It is the beloved of Yah. He says unto Yeshuran, he says, first of all, we have gone in Shomain. We have gotten fat. We've gotten fat in our lust. We've gotten fat in our wickedness. Uh, he says, you have waxed. You have grown fat. And then you've gotten fat. You kick. When you think you know more than Yah, you kick against his wisdom. Uh, you fight against the wisdom of Yah. He said, you've gotten fat and you kick. Uh, when one thinks that he or she is wiser than you, uh, you can speak to them the simplest of wisdom. Uh, they will kick against that. When you find a man or woman whose heart is pure, to those to the pure, all things are pure. But to those that are defiled and unbelieving, they can't even hear the voice of a child speak. They can't hear nobody's voice speak. To them there is nothing pure, Yisra'ya. And because we have gotten so fat, engaging ourselves, we indulge ourselves with our own fatness. He said, you have grown thick. You're grossly fat. You are. He said you are covered with fatness. Because your mind has become so fat with cares of this life. Mama and daddy and sons and daughters and kinsmen. He said become so fat. He said once you did that then you forsook me. He said then you forsook Yah. Which made you Yeshurun. You forsook him. You get fat with these cares. He said you forsook me. And then you lightly esteem the rock of your Yeshua. Do we esteem Yeshua? Come on, Yisraeli. We gather in his house. There is no esteeming of him. There is no exaltation. Not at all. You get together somewhere eating some fried chicken. You act like a damn fool. You're loquacious. You talk. Your voice can be heard. You come to Yah, you can't even move. You don't esteem Yeshua HaMashiach. But yet you have Imuna. You don't even esteem him. Hallelujah. Yah says in verse 16, they provoke me to jealousy with all of these wicked gods they have. The mama god, the cousin god, the damn dead gods, the graveyard gods, every kind of damn god but the true Abba of creation. He said, they provoke me to jealousy with strange gods and with to Abba abominations. They have provoked me to anger to us. A nation of people. We, that nation, a Sugula people, he has given a special gift. He said they sacrifice the devils. Do you all hear that? They sacrifice the devils. You cannot go in these houses of darkness that denounce Yahshua and set these damn dead bodies. I'm talking to us all. You that are listening, you hear too as well. If they denounce your sure, they call upon demons because that Jezebel, that old heifer, that devilish son that died, was a wicked damn man. And you sacrifice in orations unto a damn devil, that's what they are. They're demons. I, I don't care if you don't like me, you get upset. Uh, we got to get this thing real. You sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils, uh, but not to Yah. They don't, what? They don't obey Yah's commandments. Uh, they don't do what Yah commands him. Uh, they, we don't do what Yah commands. Come on, I don't care if you're not a knight. It makes no difference at all. Uh, he tells us the zakah, shabbat, keep it kadosh. Uh, he means what he says. Uh, he's not going back on that for you or your mama or your grandmama. His name is kadosh. He means what he says. You don't get comfortable with this damn wicked world, huh? 
They sacrifice the devil lies. It's not shot on the father of lies. It takes away our faith. He did not abide in truth. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a liar. They lie against Yah. Come on. They sacrifice the devils not to, to Yah. They sacrifice to gods whom they know not. To new gods that come up newly. Whom the father, whom they, even their fathers did not even fear. They didn't even fear their wicked gods. They did not even participate in their ways. I'm getting to it. Don't worry. Verse 18. Of the rock that has Yalad, Yoshua has begotten us, Almighty Yah. You are, he says, you are unmindful. That's an insult. That's an indictment upon us, Yisrael. He says, uh, of the rock that has Yalad, you. He says, you are shoya, you are unmindful. Your mind is depraved when it comes to him. You deprive him. You don't even care. He said, you are unmindful and you have forgotten Yahweh that has formed you. You've forgotten the one that has made you. We have forgotten Yah. But yet we also we have the special Imuna. There's a special man or, or special woman that has Imuna. Not every man has it. Listen to this, Yisrael. And when Yahweh saw it, he no acts. He abhorred. He despised them. Because of the provoking of his sons and his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what the end shall be. He says, they are a people that's to, they are tapuka. They are very forward people. They're very perverse. They're wicked. They are unclean. He said they're a very perverse generation. And then this is the catalyst. He says children, children in whom? Children in whom? There is low, no faith at all. Children in whom? That there is no faith. Children in whom? That there is no, that's an indictment against us. Because we are a forward people, our thoughts are perverted, our ways are abominable. He said, it is the wickedness of a man or a woman. You will know that there is no faith. It is their ways. They have not heard. They have not heard. What must I do to hear this and to do it? To hear it and to do it. He said, children that are forward. They are a people that's the puka, they are perverse, their thoughts, their ways. And he says, and the reason they are that way, the reason they are so wicked is because they are children that have no faith. They have no confidence, no immun. Their thoughts are not on Yah. They have no confidence in Yah. We don't even consider him. We're children of no faith. We can't even pray a prayer of faith. We don't even pray with each other. We don't want to pray with each other. Hell, we'd rather talk. And you damn talkers that love to talk, let someone say, let's go to the tavern. I can pray three hours. And watch how they will watch the clock back there to get up. I will come on, man. The women that love to talk, the whole tell them let's go pray and see how they're going to pray. Nothing in them. Not a damn thing. I don't take it back. We got to get real by judging us and seeing this vile nature that is in us. And you began by shutting your mouth. Children in whom? Are we the children of Yah? No faith. Children in whom? That's why we forsake everything. We forsake prayer. We forsake consideration. We forsake caring. He said, children in whom? There is no faith. In order to understand that, Yisraya, I want to direct your attention to the book of Lucas. This is when you're sure, Luke chapter 22, verse 32. This is the prayer of Yahshua as he admonishes the Talmudim. He says in Luke 23, 32, 22, 32, he said for them, he said, I have prayed for you. I have prayed. 
He said, for what reason? That your faith, your imunat, fail not. That your imuna, it takes imuna, the faith of Yah, his amun, to convert us. And then he says to them, he says, uh, and when you are converted, when a man truly has the conversion of Yah by imuna, he says, uh, straight on, you will strengthen the Yisraelite uh, Achim. You will strengthen the ark. When a man has the power of that conversion by Imuna, his words uh, always bring strength. That's what it does. Uh, he said, when you are changed, when your heart uh, has been massaged and nourished by this word, uh, I have spoken and imparted into you that you believe it in the midst of all trials. Uh, he says, strengthen those that are weak. I pray that your imuna fail you not. And the voice of Moshe said, Yah spoke to him and said, These are children that have no faith. They have none whatsoever. Children that have no faith. Yahshua said, I pray. This is my prayer. And this is the petition of Hamashiach for Yisrael, that our faith fail us not. And then once we have been strengthened by imuna, we strengthen Yisrael. Our words of great strength. Our presence was strengthened. That's the beauty of a man or woman. Your presence strengthened. Just, so, just your, your beauty strengthened, Yisraya. You can't do that, Yisraya. We can't play around. We cannot. We hear the word, then we must do it. We must fashion ourselves completely according to the Torah of Yah. You know I'm not here for nickel or dime because if that was the case, I would not talk like this. I would try to draw people here and get them to come. If they only come stay two or three months, give ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. That's not my heart. That's not my desire. That's not my passion. It isn't. I believe this book. In my ignorance, I believe it. I'm weak. I fail every day. But I do not go and participate in the sins of corruption that I know that are sins. I'm not a practitioner. I don't do, you know the things I used to do? I don't do them no more. You got me today, you won't get me tomorrow with that same thing. No, I don't do it. I don't do it, Yisraya. We got to have strong men, strong elders, zakhim. Men that are strong, their presence. Uh, even among the young men, their presence uh, and their beauty inspire the young man. Uh, hell, you can't even find that today. I'm not going to stop saying it. You can get itchy, your feet can get itchy, and your head, I won't stop saying it. I don't give a damn. You're wise in your own conceited ways. You had faith. It speaks of great volume. Hallelujah. And I proceed a little further. I'm going to move quickly because I want to finish up here. And Torah says here in the book of 3rd Ezra, I want to read this. And then I'll relate that in the renewed or the Brit Hadassah. The book of Ezra, 3rd Ezra, chapter 5, verse 1. He speaks of the sins of the Avat of Yisrael. And because of their sins, the nation has forgotten their creator. So in verse 1 he says, Nevertheless, as coming the token, behold, he talks about the day shall come, that they which dwell upon the earth, they shall be taken in great number. Now this is what he says in Ezra. He says the way of the truth shall be pala. See, the way of truth is hidden today. People have no knowledge. He said, the way of truth uh, shall be hidden. It will be a thing that's too high for the conscience of man. He will not be able to perceive that. He said, the way of truth shall be hidden. Listen. And the land, and the land shall be barren of faith. The land shall be barren of faith. Are we in the Akhirid? As I can remind us all the time of the Akhirid, the Akhirun. We're in the last days. He said, in the land now, if these words do not have any kind of substantiation, then they are invalid. 
He said, and the land shall be barren of faith. And when something is barren, when a body is barren or a car, it is sterile. It cannot produce. And the mind today cannot produce faith. Our hearts cannot produce faith today. We have no legitimate foundation or constitution of faith. And that's just the truth, Yisrael. Our minds do not produce it. It produces folly. He said, the land, the Eric, shall be barren of faith. Well, that doesn't mean that there will not be Imona. There's a profound Pacific that Yahshua speaks in the book of Lucas. Marcus Lucas. Luke 18 and verse 8. It says this. It says this. I tell you that Yah is going to avenge them speedily that have fought against Yisrael. But look what he says. Ezra says that the land will be barren of faith. Yahshua said that Yah is going to avenge them speedily that have fought and done his people wrong. It says, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, when Yahshua comes, when he enters in, shall he find faith on the earth? When he comes, will he find faith? If the land is barren, it's going to be a it's sterile. When he comes. Well, that's in the end time. When he comes, when he knocks at the door, does the door open? Do we open our hearts, our minds to hear? When he comes by the power of the Ruach, do we open our hearts to hear him? When your shoe comes, we think he's in the distance, that he doesn't come? He is the word, Yisrael. Yeah. He is the word that made flesh. When the word comes, does it find faith in us to believe? That has more than a one-fold expression, Yisrael. When he comes, he was the word made flesh. When the word comes, will the word find faith? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the, the word of Yah. When he comes, will he find faith? I know it speaks of the time when this kingdom shall be established, but his kingdom is in us. So when he comes, does he find faith? We don't want to deal with our abominable, wicked ways. We don't want to deal with our uncleanliness. When his word comes, does it find faith? When is the Torah come, does it find faith to bring about that nourishment? We say, oh man, I believe I support that. It strengthens me. I will nourish those words. I will keep that word in my heart. There's a brother that calls me, an ark from Ohio. He got a very beautiful ark. The matter of fact, his name is Jermaine. He has a beautiful spirit, fearful. He said, Ray, I, I, I just want to do it right. And I listened to one of the teachings you taught. And I don't want to play around. And he's a very humble man, very humble. And I talk loud with him, and his, his, he, he stays. His residency is, is the same. He said, man, don't even talk like that. You understand? He said, but I listen. And I want to do right. I know it's no time to pretend. And you can tell the sincerity in this uh, heart. I can. I can. He had called right before service at night. He called the other day. I said, man, you don't understand. I work. Tired. And so when I called him back, he said, I, I appreciate it so much. I'm so glad you called me. There's not many real men out there. You can think what you want to. You got a lot of boys. They think they know. And they don't know anything. That's a fact. You're not going to tell me about the nutrition when you look like a mess. You're not going to tell me about the things of Yah when you don't have even the beauty of that, of what you're talking about. You, you can sell that to someone. You're not going to tell me that. It's best you just be quiet. That's why they say nothing to that old man. I just watched him, all right? Hallelujah. So when he comes, will he find faith? The gift, the sugula, the gift, the gift of Yah. Wisdom, the book of wisdom, Shilomo. He speaks this, he says in the book of wisdom, write it down. Wisdom chapter 3, verse 14, the book of wisdom. 314. This is what he says in the book of wisdom. He says, and bless is the saris, the eunuch, the man that has set his life that has segregated his life for one purpose, for Yah. 
Wisdom 3.14. Wisdom 3.14. Blessed is the eunuch whose hands have done no Torahless deed. That's a man. He doesn't practice anything against Torah. His heart doesn't uh, defy what Torah says. Uh, he doesn't do anything. His life has been one that is Torahlessness. There are no infractions against him. His beauty shines. He says, no, imagine wicked things against Almighty Yah. He doesn't imagine wicked things. Men don't think when they imagine thoughts against the messengers of Yah, it's against Yah. They were against Moshe and Aharon because they were against Almighty Yahweh. They don't believe that, my Zakin. He said, neither has that one imagined any kind of wicked thing against Yah. For to him shall be given. The special Sugula gift of faith. That kind of man. He shall be given the special gift of faith. And an inheritance in the great tabernacle of Yah. More acceptable to his mind. But a man has set himself apart to please Yah. He shall be given the special gift of faith. There's a segula, there's a treasure of imuna. And when that man prays, there's action. There's a reward. And he shall have his part in the great tabernacle of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Where are they, Yah? They're not to be found. That's a fact. You can pretend all you want to. I've had men tell me they were eunuch. And then all of a sudden, because the Torah talks about it, they become froward. They become a froward individual. They become wanton. Papuka. They become lustful. Then they abandon that. Sure it is, Ak. They abandon that. Same thing he talks about a woman. She becomes froward. She becomes lustful. You understand? But a man that is a eunuch, a saris for Yah, he shall be given the special gift of Almighty Yahweh. Well, uh, that, 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 that has nothing to do with Torah. Well, look what Shaul says here in Corinthians, yeah, Second Corinthians. If you don't think it's a special gift, you, it takes faith to believe in Yahshua HaMashiach. It takes a genuine faith. Look what Shaul says in Second Corinthians, quickly. Chapter 9, verse 15. One verse I want to read. Second Corinthians 9, 15. He says, Torah unto Yah, Torah be to Yah, for his unspeakable Gift, a gift that is beyond expression. He shall be given the special gift of faith. He shall be given the heart of Yahshua HaMashiach. When a man set himself apart to serve Yah at the priest, and he let nothing interfere with that, he shall be given the special gift of faith. He will be able to hear the voice of Yahshua. He can hear the word of Yah because it speaks volumes in his heart. Uh, and Shavu speaks the same thing that Ezra spoke there. He says, uh, Toda, Yada, Yahuda to Yah for his unspeakable gift. Yahshua HaMashiach. Unspeakable gift. His Sugula. Special gift. Special gift. But a man has set his mind to please Yah. He lets nothing get a fit with that. He has a special gift. He has a revelation of Yahshua. He has knowledge of Yahshua. He has strength of Imuna. His words when he speaks uh, in his weak state of mind, uh, they're strong and they're powerful. Uh, it costs the ear of the king uh, to be bent down. Uh, we examine ourselves according to the Torah and not by all the simple, stupid minds uh, that promotes only me. You have nothing, man. You had something, it would be seen. That's a fact. Hallelujah. Can I proceed a little bit? It's a sure thing when a man has the gift the gifts of Yah, it brings about a beauty to that man. And no one could speak it with more insight than Shirak. Shirak, chapter 25, verse 12. I must tie this in with books that you're familiar with. But Shirak, 25, verse 12. It says, the fear of Yah, the Yare of Yah, the fear of Yah, is the beginning of his love. See, when a man fears Yah, you know he loves him. When a man fears the construct of the order of Yah, you, he says that the fear of Yah is the beginning of Islam. And faith 
and imona, imon, faith, is the beginning of daba, clinging to Yah. See, when a man has faith, he clings to Yah. He clings to every word. He hears the Torah of Yah. It enlightens him. It makes him rejoice. It causes his heart to be fattened. And it takes faith to cause us to cling to Yah. We don't cling to him because we have no faith. We don't love him because we have no faith. You can boast in all that you have. Man, I'm a brother of great faith. You're not one of great faith. You don't have faith. We believe, but that doesn't mean we have the special gift. We don't set our minds apart for times and seasons of meditating in the Torah. And I mean nothing but with Yahweh. We're guilty of that. And if you say you're not, you're flat out liar. Let's just get real. Huh? You can pretend all you want to and smile at something because you think you've done something right in your own conceited ways. You haven't done anything right. When a man has faith, he cleaves unto Yah. He, cleans, he cleanses unto Yah. He dabak. He, 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 he lay hold to his truth. He doesn't let it go. Your emotions cause you to let truth go. I heard a man make a statement. Uh, it was just recently. Uh, he said, all this emotionalism it is of hell is of Hashatan. I buy it. I've been saying that ever since I've been a preacher. I'm not the only one that said it because he said it as well. Uh, you got this superficial stupidity of men and women today that they, they vasculate. Uh, happy for a second and mean as a damn dog the next second. There's a wickedness there. There's a wickedness there. They don't have faith. A man has faith, he clings to Yah. He clings to the body. He clings to the truth. He loves the body. He makes sure the body stays clean because his mind is clean. And a dirty old mind, you're not even clean. Oh, I know I said that if I didn't have to take baths, I wouldn't take baths, but I love taking baths. Now that I do, I love being clean. I like for my body to be clean. Everything from my hand to my toes, I, I wash everything. I like to be clean now. This works too, this therapeutic hand, the right hand of Yah Yahshua. And strove that wickedness out of us, all right? Let me move. I want to finish up here. Shurak again says, Shurak 25, 12, the fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom, is the beginning of his love. So when you fear Yah, it's because you love him. You love him. It's the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving uh, to him. Uh, now, Debarim speaks the same words in Deuteronomy 10, 20. Hallelujah. It says here, phraseology a little different, but it says, you shall fear Yah, your Abba. See, you shall yareya, Dibarim 10, 20. You shall fear him, and him shall you serve. So when you serve someone, you cleave onto that one. When you serve someone, there's nothing more faithful than a faithful servant. You cleave onto that one. He says that to him shall you cleave. So when you serve him, you cleave. When you love God, you will cleave. When you have faith, you cleave onto him. We cleave unto lies and folly and stupidity. When a man loves Yah, him say you cleave, uh, and you should declare all things by his name. I can do all things through the power of Almighty Yah and Yahshua, for he is my strength. Uh, so when you fear Yah, you know when you fear Yah, you cleave unto him. Uh, you can talk anything you want to. Well, it's said in the book of wisdom. It says the same thing in the book of Devarim as well. Book that you're familiar with, but yet we're not familiar with, with the book of Devarim. When a man is a servant of Yah, when a man loves Yah, he cleaves unto Almighty Yah. He dabak, he holds fast, he clings unto him. That's what the Torah says. We don't cling unto the word Yisrael. Let's be honest and real. We don't hold it fast in our hearts. We hear it for a moment and it's gone. We're guilty of that. When Yahshua comes in this word, when the power of his expression comes, does he find faith to believe that it's difficult for us to believe what we hear? That's why it doesn't satisfy us, doesn't nourish us. So when one, as Debarim 10, 20 says, and to him shall you cleave, and you shall declare all things by his name. We must cleave unto Yah. If we dabak, if we have faith, we will cleave unto Yah. We will cleave unto his mitzvah, his command. That's the truth, Yisrael. Yeah. We can't get so upset or offended when we know we're doing things wrong and done things wrong when Yah correct us. 
We can't do that. We must hear what he says. And that's just a fact, Yisrael. We need to have we need to have a prayer like this. I want to read some of the prayer Baruch, second Baruch, Baruch, second Baruch. I have a few more, and I'm going to rush through. All right. I don't know if I finish on, but that's all right. This is the prayer Baruch, Baruch, second Baruch, Baruch, fifty-four and verse four. He says unto Yah, "You are the one who revealed to those who fear." See, only reveals unto those. Who fears, Second Baruch 54 and 4, that fear that which is prepared for them. See, Yah has prepared things for us. Fear for the pepper them that you may comfort them. Trials, he has prepared them. Zakim brought out an exhibit of Torah for us concerning the fiery trials. He has prepared them for us for one thing to comfort us. He has prepared the trials of fire for one thing. Did he not do that with Shadrach? Mishrach and Abednego. Daniel, yeah. He prepared that for that he may not harm, he may comfort them. He says unto you, you show your mighty works to those who do not even know. He shows mighty work with breath every day. We don't even know that. He has, he, you know, he, come on. I don't want to get up with temperamental uh, attitudes. I, no. Get up right. I'm alive. He said, you have done that for those who don't know you. You pull down the enclosure for those who have no experience and enlighten that darkness. He said, you reveal the secrets to those who are spotless, who are without sin, who are not walking in sin, who are not men that are full of guile and folly. That's who he re revealed his secrets unto. He doesn't reveal the power of his truth to silly, immature men. The, those that whose lives are, are spotless and when they talk, uh, they can tell you they have experience. He said to those, to those that subject themselves to you and your Torah in faith. Now, do we do that? We don't do that. Now, you, 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 you can't say you do it, but I don't. We must subject ourselves to Yah and his Torah in faith. And he revealed the great mysteries unto us and the strong things of knowledge. But every man will say, I, 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 you know, I, 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 I'm subject unto Torah. I'm subject unto Torah and Yah, Yoshua by faith. That's what they will say. Because they're self-grandizing. And it's just not the truth. Y'all will not give me a message like this uh, if, I'm, if, if I'm on the money. See, I'm never on the money. Neither you. You're never on the money. Never. The only way we can do it through the power of that living Torah, Yeshua. We can do all things through him. You can't do a damn thing without him. And that's a fact. And you cannot have the knowledge of Torah and the wisdom of Torah unless you have that gift of Yah. And every man does not have that gift of Yah. Not every man. And that's a fact. Every man is not spotless. I know there are men that are spotless. Their lives are circumspect according to Torah. They have faith in Torah. They have faith in Yah. This is a generation that loves to debate and, and they have no ability to debate. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. They have none whatsoever. I'll give you a word of great strength and encouragement here in the book of Habakkuk. This is what the power of Torah will do, Yisrael. The only way we're going to be justified is by Imuna. We're going to have to be justified that way. In the book of Habakkuk 2 and 4, it says, Behold his nephesh, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. That's what we lift up our nephesh. But we're not right. And Yah reminds us, he says, The just shall live by Imuna. You can lift up yourself all you want to. 
You can be self-grandizing and think you're high and mighty, as the old one would say. But when you're a man that have been justified by Yah, you live by faith. You have great faith. You can say you got this, you like this, when you're spotless like that one, no. When a man is just, when he is your shah, when he's a just man, when he's straight, he lives by faith. He's a man that walks by faith. He's a man that has that emun of Yah. He has the omen. He has confidence in Yah. He's a strong man. We have not measured, met that measurement. You that are self-conceited may think you have, but you haven't. You haven't. That's why we need to be put to the fire of the test to try our hearts, to show us that wicked thing in us. We may cast it out. Get it out. It's not of you The just shall live by faith. The just. We have a sure word in Revelation. Gileana. It says in Revelation 14, 12, here is the endurance, the patient, here is the sure thing. Revelation. In chapter 14, verse 12, he say, here is the patience. Here is the patience, the endurance of the Yisraelite Kedushim. Here's their strength. Here's the assurance of the Yisraelite Kedushim. Here are they that keep the mitzvah of Yah, the commandments of Omar Yah. This is your patience. You must guard the commandments of Yah. You can't. You must, Yisraelite. They keep the mitzvah of Omar Yah, and they have the imuna of Yoshua HaMashiach. That's how we're justified, by faith, no other way. You're not going to be just without faith. You can do all the talking you want to. You can lift up your nephesh all you want to with your arrogance and your pride. But here's our patience, that we keep the commandments, we guard them, and we have the imuna of Yahshua HaMashiach. We have the living Torah, we have a living faith. And that's something that is dead. This damned of a dead mess we got that doesn't, you know, if it's dead, uh, when it's dead, uh, there's no life that comes from it. You got that which is living, there's life in it. That's a fact, Yisrael. That's a fact. I want to close here because of time. One scripture, there's, Zakim would say much more to this. It says here in the book of Metitia, when you're sure he'll the centurion's servant. In the book of Matthew 8.10. When Yahshua heard the response of the centurion, say, he said, Master, you don't have to go to my house. Just speak the words only. And my servant shall be healed. When Yahshua heard it, he marveled. Listen now. And said, to them that followed, truly I say to you, listen, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Yisraya. When he came, he found no faith. When he came the first time, he found no faith. He said, this is a centurion. And among all Yisraya, he said, the man said, just speak the word. Just like Dibarim, Dibarim says to us, uh, who's going to say, go up unto the heavens and get the word or go to the sea and get it? We like things like that. I'm going down to South America to preach. We like things like that because it makes us think that we have some kind of spiritual identity. We like to talk and run our mouths with other men to, to try to uh, prove, prove them that you know more than them. That's not, a, that's not a spiritual man. You know, CEO of a corporation, he doesn't, he, he doesn't his presidents and his CEO or his vice president, he doesn't, he doesn't show off on them. He listens to them. He listens to them and he makes the final resolution. Damn fool think he's heard because of him much talking. He can't even hardly talk. He said, I have not found no faith like this. And that was then, wasn't it? Nearly two grand, 2,000 years ago. When he come, will he find faith? We're here 2,000 years later. When he comes, when the word comes, does it find faith to nourish us? It's just not so. We got to contend with ourselves and examine ourselves daily to see what's in our hearts. We have very little faith, and that's a fact. We believe, the demons believe, and they tremble. And our faith, look what we have, look what has garnered us, look what has, look what has brought to pass to us. Very little. And that's just the truth, Yisrael. 
And the reason why, because we don't have the ability to hear. We began to hear what the Torah says and love the Torah. So when we love Yah, when we love Yah, we began to love Him. You know you got some fear. And then when you began to cleave to Him because you got faith. It's like a child walking with mama, daddy. That child holds on the way because they know that that's where their, re their resource is and their resources of life. We don't hold on to the hand of Yah. We don't hold on to the garment of His truth. Uh. When that woman with Israel blood touched the garment of Yahshua, she was made every bit whole. Uh. Yahshua could do no great works among uh, His own people because of their unbelief. Let me read this last one. I want to close with this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in Mentitia, I want to close with this. In Matthew chapter 21, 21. I'm just going to read part of this. Matthew 21, 21. Whenever Yahshua cursed the fig tree. It says, Yahshua answered and said unto the time of them. This is like Matthew 21, 21. Truly I say to you, if you have emona faith, uh, and he uses the word mlah, mlah, and doubt not. We doubt. We doubt. We say, well, peradventure, perhaps, well, uh, we'll see. If you have emona and doubt not, we have doubt. We're full of doubt. We're not full of emuna. You can say to the forces of hell, be thus moved from around me. You can say you have faith. And we can say we believe. We got to have something greater. And what we have, and the way we're going to get it is by hearing. We need to shut our damn mouths and listen, Yisrael. That's our problem. We need to hear. Stop being the master of everything. I don't want to be the master of everything. My oldest brother would tell me I'm, the, I'm a jack of all trades and the master of none. I don't master nothing. When a man gets that kind of wisdom, there's much weariness and much troublesome with a man like that because he knows what, what a nation of people are in. You're not troubled because you're wise and you're wise in the Torah of Yah. You're troubled because of your own doubt and your own lust and your flat out wickedness that we perform. That's a fact. Hallelujah. You see a man that is physically strong, you know he's physically strong. You look at a man, you can see his, his physical dynamics and you know he's strong. You can pretend you're strong, but you're not strong. You see a man lift 500 pounds and you try to lift you can't even budget. That's a fact. But you want to pretend. You want to present yourself like, look at me, what is it to look at? It's not a damn thing. You still look a mess. Stop it. That's the fact. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Bless you all that have joined us. May Yah enrich you. Let's turn to Yerushalayim. In all things we do, Barak, your Ar Abba, bless your people. Go with us, guide us, strengthen us all, and take our Zachin safely home and those with him, and our Achot Blant and Jennifer, watch over them, their home. And everyone, we bless those that join us live in this broadcast in your shoes' name. Strengthen us all and keep us all in your shoes' name. Hallelujah. 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 Yabarak Yisrael.